Hello, did you know that Excel can now pull stock prices or mutual fund prices or even foreign exchange prices into Excel? Yes, it's true. Let's get started. My name is Jeff Mankin and I help you learn financial literacy, which is accounting, finance, or Excel. So to make this trick work, you have to have the Excel Office 365 version. Uh, you can check and if you go to the data tab the data tab here we now have data types and so we're going to look at the stock type today our previous video had geography where we did u.s zip code states countries where it pulled some information so i'll give a link to that video below now today we're going to look at the stocks like ticker symbols company names mutual funds or even currency a foreign currency for uh, different currency pairs so let's get started here. Companies, I just have a list of companies. Some of them are the full name, some of them are partial name. For example, Disney, it's the Walt Disney Company. F is Ford, that's a ticker symbol. KO is Coca-Cola, ticker symbol. So we have a, a mix of names, partial names, capitalization, non-capitalized, and let's see if it works. So here's what we do. We're going to highlight this entire column and click on stocks, it's gonna recognize that these are stock symbols and it's gonna retrieve the name of the company. So let's do it. All right, now let's look at, at data types. Do you see it has this little icon which is the stocks icon? And so it's pulled for Apple. Apple Inc. is the name of the company. It's on the NASDAQ in the United States and here's the, the ticker symbol AAPL. Well, Walt Disney is the official name. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, DIS is the ticker symbol. So let's just pull several things. So if you have all these highlighted, then you have a little pop-up menu, and you have all this information that you can pull. So 52-week high or low, the change in stock, the headquarters, the exchange it's on, the exchange abbreviation, the market cap, the official name, the ticker symbol. So let's pull the ticker symbol. I, I'm going to pull several little things based on uh, what we can do. So the ticker symbol is one thing we can pull. So here's the ticker symbol for each of the companies. Now if we investigate this then it says hey this is A3 ticker symbol. So this is a new type of format that we haven't had before in Excel. So let's highlight everything. Let's keep going. We can do the price. So the price, this is all in U.S. dollars because these are all U.S. companies. We can actually do how many employees. So employees. And then we can also pull something like what is the industry that they're in. So you can pull just with, you know, remember all we did was put for Coca-Cola, we put KO and it pulled Coca-Cola company. We found KO is the ticker symbol. Here's the most recent price. Here's the number of employees. And here are the beverages. Well, one thing we can do, we can sort. We, we might want to say, hey, with our list of companies, what company has the most employees? So let's look. Coca-Cola has 62,000. And let's sort. If you go here, we're still on the data tab. And let's sort from the largest to the smallest. So we'll do this one. And so Coca-Cola has the second smallest number of employees. Walmart has the most at 2.2 million, and Target has 360,000. The smallest of this list of companies uh, in terms of employees would be Netflix. And so here it says Coca-Cola is in the beverage industry, and Target is diversified retail. Pretty fascinating. Well, let's switch over to mutual funds. Mutual funds, I have, I pulled some symbols. These are all happen to be S&P 500, which is the Standard & Poor Index Funds. So let's um, pull based on these ticker symbols. This is probably the easiest way to do it because the actual fund name is pretty long. So highlight all the ticker symbols. We'll hit stocks. Here it says this is the Fidelity 500 or the Rydex 500 Class A. So let's pull the ticker. We already know the ticker symbol, but let's pull the ticker. Okay. 
and we can do the expense ratio. Now, one of the things when you're looking at mutual funds, we want to look at the expense ratio. The expense ratio is here, and we can actually sort, if we want to, by, by the expense ratio. We can do that here in a little bit. We can also can do the net assets. How big are these funds? So these are in actual dollars. So we have the largest fund is the Vanguard 500, 500 index, Admiral class, $300 billion, huge. The JP Morgan fund is $106 million. We can pull the price, the most recent price, and we can do math on this if we want to. So let's say we, we figure out, well, hey, you know, these expense ratios, it says, well, here's how much, uh, based on the assets under management, how much the expense would be. Well, let's just put it in terms of $10,000. You have $10,000 to invest. So let's calculate the 2%, not 2%, but 0.02%, less than uh, two, about two tenths of, uh, two one hundredths of a percent. That number times 10,000. That number times 10,000 means for every $10,000 invested, it's going to cost us $2. So that's the Fidelity 500 index fund. And we can go all the way down and we can say, well, for the Rydex S&P 500, the C class, this 2.33%, it's going to cost you $233 for that $10,000 investment. And so let's say you care about the, the fees and you want to uh, sort from smallest to largest, well, all you have to do is put your uh, selected cell in this column and we'll go uh, smallest to largest. So the smallest are the Fidelity and Vanguard and Schwab and another Vanguard. And the most expensive here for $120, $130, $158, $233 are Wells Fargo, Invesco, Rydex, and Rydex. So that's one way you can do this. You can not only pull information, but then you can do math on it. All right, let's show foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is called Forex. By the way, I learned this tip from Mr. Excel, Bill Jelen. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel and website, MrExcel.com. So check him out. He's got tons of Excel videos. So here, I just have put currency pair. So this is the official way to designate a currency pair. So CAD is Canadian dollar, US dollars. This is the Mexican peso versus US dollars, the Euro to US dollars. So here's what I'm doing on this tab is everything in terms of US dollars. So how many US dollars to buy one unit of foreign currency? So we do the same thing. This is still under the stock function. So it pulls this currency pair. We can pull the actual name. So the name is Canadian dollar to the US dollar, uh, the exchange cross uh, rate, foreign exchange. So they're using the symbol FX for foreign exchange. And then the Euro to US dollars, Chilean peso, Japanese yen, the British pound sterling, and the Swiss franc. Well. Obviously, we know the ticker symbol, but that's one thing that's easy to pull here. The same thing here, the ticker symbol. And then price in U.S. dollars. So if we pull the price here, then the price is, is how much does it take to buy one unit of foreign currency? Well, what foreign currency were you actually talking about? So this is the US dollars, right? So to buy one peso, let's look at this one. To buy one peso, it takes about five cents. So to buy a thousand pesos or a thousand Canadian dollars, what does it take? So let's take the exchange rate times 1,000. And so to buy a thousand Canadian dollars, it's going to take 759, almost 760 US dollars. So let's copy this down. So let's see what, what it works, what works for everything. So for Mexican pesos, it takes about a nickel. And so it takes to buy a thousand, it takes $52, almost $53. So that's how it works if you are thinking in terms of US dollars. Now you can think the opposite way. So let's do the same thing, basically the same foreign currency. 
but how many units of foreign currency to buy one U.S. dollar? So if you think of it that way, where it's going to be a little bit backwards and everything's going to be denominated in the foreign currency versus the U.S. dollar. So we're going to hit stocks. It's going to pull that, hey, this is a currency pair. We're going to pull the, the name, which is U.S. dollar per Canadian dollar or the U.S. dollar to the Mexican peso. So our ticker symbol, we already know. So let's pull the ticker. And what's the price in the foreign currency? So the price. And what's our currency? Now, one thing you'll notice is the Canadian dollar uses the same symbol. The peso uses the same symbol. But the euros obviously uses the euro symbol. The yen and the pound have different symbols. And then the Swiss franc um, has CHF for Swiss franc. So the currency, what currency are we talking about? Well, this currency is Canadian dollars, pesos, euros, so on. Well, to buy a thousand times, well, I need to make a formula here. So a thousand times the 132, to buy a thousand dollars, it's going to take 100 and um, 100 and 32, 1315 basically, to buy $1,000 worth. So it's going to take about 1300 Canadian dollars. To buy $1,000, it's going to take about 19,000 pesos. So you can look at it either one way or the other way in terms of do you want everything denominated in dollars or do you want it denominated in the foreign currency. So that's how you do the data types with stocks, and you can pull lots of information on this. So hope this has been helpful. Please subscribe and ring the bell. And we'll see you next time at Finally Learn.